Chelsea fan cast, Chelsea fan cast, hello, hello. Chad's on it tonight, mate. What, what, what have you been drinking, mate? I love it. Uh, right, uh, I am Stanford Chidge. This is the Chelsea fan cast, and we welcome you back. Now, uh, before I say anything, I've just got so I got a tweet from Walter Otten, who, uh, as I said, he did the, uh, the you know, the, uh, the Williams song. He just tweeted me to say, I love you. I love you too, Walter. I mean that from the heart of my bottom. I really do. Uh, anyway, right. Uh, a story book arrest. Um, can we have a look at the lineup, please? Because, you know, it seems so long ago, I can't even remember. So who did we have? We had Checking Goal. We had Ivanovic, Louise, Terry Cole, Oscar, Ramirez, Lampard. And we had uh, Mata Torres Schola. I think More to the point, we had one difference only Torres to yeah. the team that lined up. Uh, and it was Torres. also 4 3 3, according to Sky. Uh, well, Sky got it wrong. You Actually, don't think it was 4 3 3? It was 100% not 4 3 3. Right. Not only did Sky get it wrong, but Sky, I think, have to take the UEFA, the UEFA summing up of it. And UEFA don't know what it is because they're not bright. No. And the delegate will go to someone at Chelsea and say, how does your team line up? And the person that he goes to, who I won't name, will give him a completely wrong line-up because they don't want to give it to the opposition Lovely. in case the opposition are so thick. Why don't they go four five one then, so, or four one three seven two? I don't know. Whatever. So they went with that, yeah. and, uh, but it was four two three. Do you know what, Neil? The, the, I think the most important thing about this, and um, this is where you and you know you and I were talking on the phone. But um, one thing that is very very interesting is that Jose seems to be settling or have settled upon his back seven. Discuss. Yeah, that that's from half time against Tottenham. Mm. Where he pulled Ramirez off the wing and and, and pulled Mikel most people off the only pitch. get a lemon at half time. Um, that's true. And, and uh, can we just say because Mikel uh, played that forty five minutes in Bucharest, but hasn't played mm. since, that he's now only played forty five minutes without scoring a goal. But, um, <laughs> but uh, I love that one. Uh, but um, uh, he 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 pulled Ramirez back in, and that's been that's been the back seven for the last two and a half games during which time we've conceded one and scored eight really mm. that is a, that's interesting that is interesting but I do you know we were talking about this earlier on but you know this is classic Jose he works from the back forward and he you know he does seem to have got settled with that and you know I've always been a huge fan of uh, you know particularly the back four get can, a settled can we back note, four can we note that we've got we conceded second fewest goals in the Premier League this season yeah. mm. can we also note with astonishment that the team that's conceded fewest is Southampton well, I mean, much as this is the Chelsea fan course and I usually ban talking about other teams, um, it's an opportunity to big myself up. And as you well know, Neil, I never, ever miss that opportunity. But I wrote a, a blog for the uh, Dugout magazine before the season started. And they said, who, will your, who is your team to watch this season? And I said, Southampton. Well, I said... How as, about that? I said as a complete know-all on American radio that the crash and burn team would be Everton. And that... <laughs> And that Southampton would be one of the three relegated teams with the Sunderland and Crystal Palace. I think uh, I rest you know, my case. Get him off Chelsea TV. <laughs> get, get me on Chelsea TV. Get him off. You know, no, it I, I want to talk about the Star Bucharest game, yeah, and I want to moan. Moan uh, away. We, we may have won four nil, and we were outstanding. And and this team is already a better team than any team in the last two years at Chelsea, including winning the Champions League. But why? Because <laughs> right, name <laughs> drop. Warning, <laughs> Peter Shreves, for whom I have He's not playing. massive respect uh, from his... Uh, he coached us for three years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but I, I've known him a long time. He knows football. He's a football yeah. man. And uh, he, he's now uh, a representative for the League Managers Association who have coordinators every game, Premier League game uh, working with referees. <clears throat> and he did the Aston Villa game, our second game of the season. And he came down the tunnel before the game and uh, I bumped into him. And he said to me in that rather unbroken voice of his, uh, even though he's now probably knocking 70 years old, he said to me, Spy, he said, it was an absolute pleasure to watch your game against Hull City. I actually saw evidence of coaching mm. all over the yeah. pitch, <laughs> is yeah. what he said. Um, <laughs> but it's tr- it's really, that's so Why true. are we better? Because we're properly coached. Yeah. But, but... I do not remember a Chelsea side since Ruud Gullit took over that is so one-footed. And in that Stau Bucharest game, Andre Schürrle crossed the ball and Oscar tried to hit it first time with his left foot and it spiralled up in the air uh, like a tornado. It didn't go and anywhere this is a near the goal. Player. It's not just a Brazilian player. It's a player who has been bought because he... he 
definitely has genius in his in his genes. He's been bought long term. <laughs> Sorry, that's quote the season. He's got genius in his genes. Yeah. I love that. Neil. He, he's he's he's. <laughs> He's, he was bought long term with a possible view to taking over from Frank Lampard. Yeah, I agree in, with that. In, in, the, in the deeper role. Frank Lampard will get you five goals a season with his left foot. Oscar won't. He has not got a left foot of the quality that I think he should have for a player of his quality. Well, you say that, but now, Maradona I, didn't have a right foot. Yeah, but Maradona was extraordinary. And how do you know? Or is that a cliche? Well, he only ever used his left well, foot. Well, I'll tell you what. I've seen Messi score a 25-yarder with his right foot, but people say he hasn't got a right foot. Mm. I just he never scored against him. Chelsea, though. Messi? No, it's rubbish. Exactly. But um, <laughs> He ain't all that. But, but uh, well, neither, neither, by the way, are Bayern Munich. Everyone's going on about well, that. I mean, we, we look at, look, I mean, we, I mean, I was, uh, yeah, good point. But let's, let's not get point, into that. Uh, let's not get, they couldn't even beat up by Leverkusen at the weekend. But, um, but uh, I want to get back into this. Torres cannot kick the ball with his left foot. Mm. All his big misses well, are with his left foot. He can't actually kick it with his right foot. We won't either. get into that. Mata <laughs> can't kick the ball with his right foot. Ashley Cole can't kick the ball yeah. with his right foot. Mikel, nobody ever says this, can't kick the ball with his left foot. If you said to our squad, how many of you can, without angst, cross the ball from the touchline with your wrong foot, how many would there be? I say there would be four. And the extraordinary thing is... With this so-called technical Terry uh, would be uh, one. deficiency mm. in England, two of them are Terry yeah. and Lampard. Yeah, exactly. The other two are David Luiz yeah. and, believe it or not, Petr Cech, who has to work on these. Really? No, yeah. no, definitely, not absolutely, absolutely, absolutely no. definitely. Go on, Darren. You, you, also, you also <laughs> like um, William scored an absolute peach with his wrong foot the other day. Well, he did, but let's. Eden Hazard scored peaches with his wrong foot. Stoke goal, yeah. But how many times when Hazard's on the left have you seen him go on the outside and how many times have you seen him go oh, yeah, on the inside? He's and I'm, more what, to go in, I'm, going to con- I'm going to expand this moan a little bit and say that Terry and Lampard have learnt to use their left foot by working on it. Mm. Players don't work anymore. Mm. They train and they go home. It is a different culture. I blame FIFA 14, Neil. Um, I, I, I blame... Money to spend, women to see, families well, they spend to it all on after, FIFA 14 uh, right? and it's entourages and God knows what. But they don't. I, I want to see players being able to kick the ball with both feet because I say, but I not get, at the same time, I, obviously. I, I, it depends. Somebody did score a goal with both feet. It was a penalty. Do you remember? Someone <laughs> yeah, fell over. Do you remember? Was it lapsed and hit a penalty and scored? <laughs> but the, the other team complained <laughs> that it was a double hit. I want to give you three goals yeah. from our Champions League winning season. Yeah. We were. In the group stage, if we hadn't beaten Valencia at home in the last game, we'd have gone out. The first goal, Sturridge played a diagonal ball over the top, Mata knocked it back, Drogba, who had fallen over when it had gone over him, and remember he'd been brought back into the team because we were doing so badly, stopped it with his right foot, 15 yards, ping left foot into the corner, past the goalkeeper. Left-footed goal. Barcelona at home. The only goal of the match. Lampard won the ball, out to Ramirez, down the left wing. The cross went behind Drogba, but he was still running, mm. able to stop, drag the ball with his left foot across Valdez into the corner. And, of course, probably the goal that... Uh, well, it wasn't the Munich goal, but the other goal we most enjoyed of Drogba's in the, that part, the final part of his career. Tottenham in the semi-final of the FA Cup. Chest, outside Gallus and the thunderbolt left foot mm. into the top corner. There is not a Chelsea player you could think of now who could get three goals like that in a season with his wrong foot. Well, there we go. What do you think about Ramirez, Darren? Um, I he had a good game, I thought. He scored two goals. What more do you want? Yeah. I think I look, the, the thing I'm really saying here, and I'd be interested to hear what Neil says about this in a minute as well, but I think, you know, going back to the whole, you know, Jose's got his, if you like, back seven settled... You know, and we we've had a lot of debate about this on the show previously about what is his best position. Surely that has got to be his best position, where he he gives the defensive midfielders some energy and dynamism. He can make runs forward. He can score goals. I mean, it's got to be his best position, really. Yeah, no, I, I do agree. I mean, I've always liked Ramirez. People say he hasn't had the best start, but I do think he's a he's clearly a very good player, and he is hopefully hitting some form again. And um, I don't know, he. I think he's got a good engine. I actually preferred it when he was running around everywhere. Um, 
I still wanted to just make the point that Chet can't kick with either foot. He definitely You're not happy about right that, foot. are you? I can tell. I can yeah, tell. He can't. And when Kay had the ball in the corner, I hate to see you upset, Darren. Um, for the Fulham match, and he passes across to Chet. Chet still wants to let it go across his body to his left foot because he can't kick with his right. Like right in the, the corner bone. where the Matthew Odding like West Stand is, he cannot kick with his right. He can't really kick with his left. He said he practiced kicking in 2005, and he still has never been able to do it. He still hits the ball off and touch on all the time. I think you and I should leave the room and let Neil yeah. and Darren carry on. I think that no, I like Ramirez as a player. I like um, what you see, I, I tell you what, you know, if we were doing fannies on this match, I would actually nominate this guy for man of the match. Uh, he is called Daniel Georgievsky, uh, and he was, in fact, he was in fact Steyer Bucharest's uh, right back. But frankly, he was at the heart of everything good that we did. And he scored a cracking goal. He scored a cracking goal, which actually on another day would be voted as a salary moment or a Guinness moment. Um, I mean, I just wonder if he actually had a bet on himself to score. I mean, have you seen a worse performance uh, by by uh, a right back than that? In the press room before the game, uh, the Sky pun, uh, co-commentator was Tony Gale, who I know most people don't like, but he was a Chelsea season ticket holder as a kid. His favourite player was Alan Hudson, West Ham. He's a proper Chelsea supporter, Tony Gale, and he said he doesn't sound like it when uh, he does co-commentary. Well, no, he supports himself, doesn't he? But he said that uh, he did both qualifying games against for Stoke Crest against Legia Warsaw. And he said the fullbacks defensively were the two worst fullbacks he's yeah. ever seen. Yeah. And he said the left back can go forward, but the right back can't even do that. <laughs> <laughs> so he he gave us warning before the game, and he was right. But Shirla, Shirla, I mean, this is actually this puts everything into quite a, a, an interesting perspective for me because on the, on on face value, Shirla had an excellent game, Pablo. And actually, to be really honest, he looked like a proper winger. He was running at people. He was getting balls in. But you know, should we mitigate that against the fact that he was up against this Burke called Georgievsky, who had an absolute yeah, man? The interesting thing was, as a um, Romanian journalist that I've been following on Twitter since the last time he played Stoya. <laughs> oh, sorry um, about that. that is a, a round of applause for Pablo, who is such a geek that he follows Romanian journalists. Well, I mean, um, are loving it for that, mate. Myself, him, and Rick Glanville were having a bit of a Twitter debrief after the game, and he was uh, saying that. Um, Last season, they played a different right back who um, kept Hazard at bay by and large in the in the other games. And apparently, this other guy was considered so much worse than the first guy that he didn't even make the squad this year. Really? Yeah. Last year's right back. The young guy was unlucky, though. I think the well, young he put it unlucky. away well, though, Darren. He did, fair. but it wasn't like he was trying one of those comedy clearances where he slid into his own net. He was running back. He couldn't stop. I don't know. That was a bit unlucky for the rest of his game. I, I, I think Sherla's attitude towards him which is, I'm going to muller you every time I get the ball, was brilliant. Yeah. Uh, his distribution wasn't always brilliant. No. It was often very wasteful. Well, what do you think and about Shirley? Even one of the goals was a slight miss hit. Well, what do you think brilliant. about Shirley? I think he's got a great attitude. Uh, I think he's... Uh, I think. Uh, I mean, I think tactically, nobody's really talked about the three behind the one, uh, not just here, anywhere. But what, what, again, in the last two and a half games, what Jose's done is he's said... Andre Shirley, you play the touchline. Oscar and Mata, you rotate. Yeah, and and that makes it really hard, I think, for the opposition because they're stretched one side. Uh, but again, he always wants to come on the inside. Interestingly, against Fulham, the only time he went on the outside was when we got the first goal, uh, when he shot and um, Stockdale didn't hold it, mm. and and Oscar finally scored. I I think Shirley needs a goal like mm. Demba Bar. He's yeah. shooting when he should pass. You he's see, missing when the he should score. Reel of Shirley before he joined, and he was firing off shots like that, and they were all going under the bar and in. And now they seem to be going over. Do you know what I like most about Shirley? He looks like a proper German. He does though, doesn't he? Do you, mm. do you not think? Yeah, but that beard, you know, but, very but what you've got, face. What, I love him. I love the guy. Proper German. I quite loved Oscar. Uh, Oscar, sorry, I quite loved um, Moses. Oscar might actually be a German, and, and I'm not sure you why. I'm not sure uh, what the people we've signed so far have given us that Victor I think, Moses yeah, didn't. I, I'm, I'm very cross and, that he got sent off and, to Liverpool. And actually, he looked quite Nigerian, Moses. Moses, well, he would, wouldn't he? But uh, <laughs> right, what else are we going to talk about? Uh, Matter, uh, of course, Matter played, and I thought you know had a very good game, uh, following up from his game against uh, when he came on against Spurs. I mean. You know, there's a lot of debate about this. Uh, you know, should Matter be number ten or Oscar? Personally, I, I'd rather have Matter there per se because I think he's a much better passer and I think he plays these 
really lovely little inside balls that, that get people in behind defenders. And I just don't see Oscar doing that as much. Plus the fact he does have a great record of assists and he does actually score more goals. So what do you reckon, Pablo? A lot went through him in the start of the game, didn't it? And yeah, it did. Um, he pulled all so the he, little he strings. He one, I like one of that. the difference makers against Spurs last week as well. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's difficult. And as, as Spy was saying, whilst, whilst you've got two players rotating into that position, it's, it's almost as if you don't really need one. And given that he is left-footed, it kind of does make sense if he is able to work defensively that he's cutting in from the other oh. side because that's how they seem to be set out to play. OK, now, uh, just to kind of wrap up on this. Actually, I'll talk to the benches for a minute, you know, because I don't want them to fall asleep. I don't want to think we're, I don't want you to think for one minute that we're ignoring you. Uh, what, what did you think of the Stoyer game generally, guys? Okay. Well, that much. Yeah. <laughs> OK. I mean, I we, only, we only won 4 nil. I mean, some people are never happy. Right, if, if they're not saying anything, I'm going to throw something in. No, no, we've had enough of you for this I part. don't care, I'm going to say this. Anyway. You are incorrigible, but that's uh, kind of why I love you. Uh, <coughs> right, Juan Mata has been the centre of a lot of attention this season, more when he hasn't played than when he has played. So let's say this, and let's say it absolutely clearly. The 45 minutes against Tottenham and the 90 minutes against Stoyer were his best game and a half in Chelsea colours. Because it's not just what you do on the ball, it's what you do against the top sides, which Tottenham are, and it's what you do for the 50% of the time you haven't got the ball as well. And it's no good saying that Matt has been a genius for 90 minutes every game. Since he's come, we came sixth and we Mm. came third, and we have struggled at the top level. He was absolutely magnificent for every minute he was on the pitch in that game and a half. And again... That's not he's doing when we come sixth and we come third, though. No, I, I agree with you there, Darren. But I mean, go on, carry no, on. But you can say the same about Rami as well. Ramirez gives the ball away too, too, too much, and he's doing it much less now. Yeah. These are the differences that are absolutely evident in our game. These are two players who, for me, haven't really been at the right level for Chelsea think in the, the thing last about Mata, two though, years, the and spy. they are now. Ramirez has always had his, his faults, though. Ramirez has always had some faults. People know that he does give away the ball too much. You're right about that, but I'm just saying... With Matter, I mean, when he went to North London last season, he scored, he's setting up goals in both of them. He was a difference in those matches. And you're saying about against Tottenham this season, but last season when Walker had the ball right near the touch and he got the ball, kept it in with Sturridge, that, that was set one up incident. the goal Torres at but, Emirates but, Stadium. But in the same way, when we were 3-0 up against Manchester United and drew 3 all, everyone will remember his volleyed goal. They won't remember that Valencia made two of the goals when they came back from 3-0 down to 3 all. And for too long, uh, there's been a side to his game that's been added to I'm, I'm saying that the improvement is so marked over the last game and a half, I can see him getting into the Spain team, never mind the Spain squad, by the times of the World Cup finals. Uh, what I would say about Mata, I've got an interesting theory on Mata, is, and that is that, you know, I mean, I think that Jose's done an excellent man management job on him. He's getting him to think about, hang on. And he's, he's been he's, magnificent yeah, in responding. He's respond, but he's a very, very bright lad. I think the trouble with Mata is actually stemming back from the previous managers who very lazily said, oh, you're such a little genius, you're our number 10, you can do what you like, you don't have to defend, you're a Spanish player. No, actually, everybody in the team defends, everybody is contributing to the attack. And Jose's come in and made that point. So You're not ta- special, you're part of the team. So let's take this one stage Good further. For him. Let's take this one stage further. Kevin De Bruyne. Well, I mean, we don't have enough time in, in a show, let alone the minute that we've got left right. in this part. What I'm but saying is... Learn. If he's got an attitude problem, learn. jog on. If he look hasn't, knuckle down and work. You're quite right. Right, we should just uh, we should finish this little chat up. I mean, what I would really like to say is, you know, Stour were poor, but, I mean, you know, you can only beat what's put in front of you. I thought it was a pretty decent win. Um, what, what, what intrigues me now, I mean, obviously it's all about the two, the two Schalke games, but are you feeling quite confident that we'll go through? Under Mourinho, even if we drew with Stour, I'd be confident we're going to go through. I just don't see him not doing so. He always said when he came second, he went on to win it like two of the times. And yeah, it was just obviously a bad first game. That is all it was. We'll go through as group winners. I don't think, but you know, we said it on the show at the time. I don't think Basel are a good or a bad team. I mean, they've had some cracking results, including drawing at Old Trafford. They're not a they're, bad they're team. They're not as good as they used to be. Well, that, they're, they're, it was a bad. They result. caught us cold. I think it was basically. a bad result. Right, I've got a lovely text in. You know, we were talk, we were talking about Steve Byrne for the celery mm-hmm. moment. He's listening to the show at work, <laughs> bless him, probably on his tube, and he says, "Thanks, Chidge, for the fantastic mention. I'm listening during my break at work, and my fellow drivers are wondering why I'm blushing. Probably because you've warmed up since last week, mate. I would say." <laughs> Spec, but there you go. Um, right now, uh, we need to uh, we need to get going because after the break we are going to be uh, having 
questions, uh, which we like to call If You Don't Ask, You Don't Get. And that is where you lot can get on Skype and uh, ask questions of Neil or Darren or me or Pablo or on Mixler. And you can feed them through to Chatter on uh, on Twitter or Mixler. And you can comprehensively embarrass us because we have to ask them, answer them. Those are the rules. It's like truth or dare, Neil, but for Chelsea Fancast. It's fair, isn't it? It's totally justified. Lovely. See you in a minute after the break. <laughs> 